I don't know if Dizzy wants to be talking about this, but from what I heard for the Galactic Star Cruiser is, so let's see what we got. Oh. This is the outside cue for rise of resistance right now. It's they are honestly the only people that I trust with their review of the Star Cruiser right now. Okay, my friends, it is a big day. We're here at Disney's Hollywood Studios. As we know, we've been doing monthly updates of the current state of Hollywood Studios. It's been pretty rough the past couple of months. We have a lot to cover. We're gonna show what's new. Is merchandise back at Galaxy's Edge? Now, the Disney Star Cruiser just had their press media preview, right? So currently, whatever is in there right now is gonna be the best state of Galaxy's Edge we're gonna see. Cause then after press and media, not as many people are filming. How is Galaxy's Edge and Batu gonna look? Because as we remember, opening day for Galaxy's Edge was great and it kind of went downhill afterwards. So this is kind of its revitalization here at Disney. Let's go see how it is. Let's see how the wait times are. What mystery chips did they give me with a Ronto wrap this time? I'm excited. Let's go. I right, walk in the studios right now. It's a little busy. It's kind of an odd meet and greet. It's right above the bathrooms. Now, right above the bathrooms right here, they have Daisy and Donald meeting. And then Daisy's over there. It's kind of odd. You're trying to go do your business and Donald's waving to you, welcoming you in to do it, and then waving goodbye. I guess you can say it's sometimes a crappy job to be a character performer on days like this. Now we're walking in. It's uh, kind of like the standard busy day now. Now this whole gift shop is still closed. This is where they have all the Pixar merch. It's just covered up with black curtains, but they still have little toys in the window here. Little aliens. Our boy Forky, all hail Forky. What is going on with these little aliens' eyes? They look like a bunch of little crackheads. Oh, this can't be real. This can't be real. What? Tower of Terror is a 130 minute wait right now. It says Rock and Roller Coaster is only an 80 minute wait, which isn't terrible. Here's a little shot of how it looks on Sunset Boulevard right now. Honestly, I'm kind of just kind of like desensitized now to the wait times and the crowd levels because it's just always busy and the lines are always long. It, it doesn't like freak me out anymore. I'm just kind of like used to it. Sadly, my friend Shawn Michael knows not working guest experience today. My friend Kyler is in charge of Shawn's joke of the day. Let's see what joke he has. What Hi, I Kyler. Saying? What's your joke of the day? I have to think of one. How do you make a tissue dance? Put a little boogie in it. Oh, you got me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, the main complaint I'm hearing from all the guests is that there's no Slinky Dog, Lightning Lanes, or Rise of Resistance. If you're not here first thing in the morning, you're going to miss out on those. You're going to be stuck waiting in standby. And it can be up to three hours for Rise of Resistance sometimes. Let's see the wait times we're dealing with. Okay, Rise of Resistance, 140 minute. Smuggler's Run, 75 minutes. Oh, Mickey's Theater's only a 10 minute wait. Star Tours is 15, which isn't terrible. Rock and Roller Coaster, 75. And Mickey and Minnie's 80. Busy day. Now here in Animation Courtyard, they've replaced the Book of Boba Fett banners with the Proud Family, which I'm really excited about. It is popping over here in Animation Courtyard. They have all the characters having little distance meet and greets. So still pretty close, just kind of a little barrier in between the performer and the guest. Yeah, let's see if there's anything new in Star Wars Launch Bay. Probably not. Now the current state of Launch Bay, I don't know what's going on, right? There's, they're just like, they're just taking down more posters and everything. But it's so much prime real estate. All the offices back here behind Star Wars Launch Bay aren't even being used. They could build like a land or multiple lands with all this area back here. Yeah, it's just become kind of like a glorified place to like enjoy the AC and sleep. <laughs> It's still all blocked off, nothing new. So if you want to meet some of the Star Wars characters, you can't really, except for seeing them far away in Galaxy's Edge. <laughs> it's just always so odd to me that this is still even open. It's just like, I don't know, it's not a good look for Star Wars, Star Wars launch bait, the state of it right now. Now the void of the Little Mermaid is still closed. I was hearing there's like some like mold issues and stuff because there was all the mist and everything for like 20 years of, in the seats and everything. So they were having to fix that. Besides that, I have no idea when it will return, if it will ever return. But uh, the queue is just kind of big become just a place to kind of like sit and uh, enjoy the shape. Now we're gonna hop into Walt Disney's one man stream. I heard they added something new, which I'm really excited to see. There's just a random microfiber clock here. Gonna see something, say something. Now they have the new exhibit for the Disney Wish. This came out a couple months ago, but before you go into the theater, they added something. So excited to see. Oh, it's Rachel's dress from West Side Story. This is, <laughs> this is so cool to see. All right, so let's see what it says right here. Tony and Maria's costumes from West Side Story 2021. Browsing and poignant West Side Story story is the tale of two star-crossed lovers, Tony and Maria, whose forbidden romance fans the flames between rival gangs in New York City. In the modern adaptation of the 1957 musical, director Steven Spielberg reimagines the Broadway hit. These costumes, created by Paul Tazwell, were worn by Tony, Ansel Elgort, and Maria, Rachel Zegler. Oh my god, this is so close. That's crazy. 
see Rachel's name right there. And then over here, they also have Bernardo and Anita's costumes. Such an odd experience. Again, if you have not seen West Side Story, Rachel had an incredible performance. It is my favorite movie of 2021. So good. I believe it comes out on Disney Plus on March 4th. It's insane to see like her name, her costume right there. I hope Rachel is able to visit it before the exhibit goes away. The restaurant in Toy Land is supposed to be opening this year. I'm gonna guess towards the end of the year. It's kind of crazy to see these signs have been up so long that they're all just like sun faded now. Now the crowds here in Toy Story Land aren't terrible. I've seen it a lot busier, but again, it's kind of a standard busy crowd. Now they did bring back the Olaf meet and greet over here by Star Tours. The 20 minute wait to give him a socially distanced warm hug. This is the lightning lane back up for uh, Star Tours. Let's venture into Galaxy's Edge now. Yeah, they did bring back the uh, plastic lightsaber, build your own. This one's a lot more affordable than the other one. So let's see if we can spot anything different that they've added. This is the outside queue for Rise of Resistance right now. It's super backed up because of Lightning Lane now. Lightning Lane gets through so much quicker than Standby. Or Standby. Look at them. All right, Standby versus Lightning Lane. Should be just a walk on. Uh, we've walked directly from front of Lightning Lane to right here. No wait at all. This ship is now under the command of the First Order. You will all disembark and proceed down the corridor for processing. Get out. <laughs> yeah, I just nerd out every time I'm in this room. It's so gorgeous. Alright, this is the back of right here. I still do have the flexi bus here in line, which I find is interesting. with seatbelts securely fastened. Keep hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the transport and supervise your children. <laughs> Tell them it's a prisoner transfer. <laughs> Turn right. <laughs> a probe droid. You're, you're not authorized. Wait, and those are the prisoners. <laughs> Lightning Lane is a must for Rise of Resistance because waiting in that long line versus pretty much automatically getting on, it's like night and day. Rise of Resistance worked flawlessly today. Nothing was down, all worked perfectly. It's one of those rides that's so fun to hear first time riders like freak out about it. Rise is a good ride, but it's the cast members who work there that make it a great ride. I love when they're like roasting you in the hallway. It's such a blast and you never know what interaction you're gonna have every single time you go on it, which is kind of like nice and refreshing. Now it's looking like all the little merchandise pods here are fully stocked 
now. Well, same thing with the second one, fully stocked, no giant holes. All right, so that's a good sign. It looks like they brought in all the merchandise and they're no longer empty anymore. All right, let's hop into the Batu market now. All right, so you are currently at Positive 5. That's cool, they have a cast member teaching guests how to play Sabacc, the card game from Star Wars. Everything is fully stocked here inside the creature stall. And they still have these, which you could put on the bottom of your lightsaber. They have a Rancor and then a loaf cap. These are gonna be $25 each. I haven't seen this one yet. They have one of little Jar Jar. That's funny. Yeah, these are all fully stocked. I do love these designs that they have. I think they're really cute. But they're all around like $23 each. Little Mascanata. Now they still have a couple of the Life Day ones. This is the one that I have. They have little Porgs. You know what's super crowded? It's just, it feels lively with the amount of people that are in here. There's no really long line for things. This is really cool that they finally have here. It's the Boba Fett gauntlet. Kind of shoots darts. And then $30 for his gauntlet. And then they have Boba Fett's rocket fire jetpack. I think it actually does fire. That's great. So you're looking at $50 for this. And then you can also get his helmet. $35 for his helmet. And they have all the costumes fully stocked in here. Top of the Droid Depot real quick. It looks like everything is fully stocked in here. Again, it's always a busy day building droids, but not as busy as I've seen it before. I do love to have the little R2 unit with the drink package on him. Finally got the battle droid. He is massive. They also have C-3PO, the battle droid. A couple weeks ago, they got in Chopper. So all the droid merchandise that we've been waiting for that showed up in Disneyland first is now here. We're not waiting for anything else, I believe. Now, since it's past three or four o'clock, Ronto's Roasters closes. I don't know why they do this, so you have to get a Ronto wrap at Docking Bay. It's still bizarre, because like, everything is open, right? It's busy. But Ronto's Roaster closes at three or four. Okay, it's time for a Ronto wrap, as you know. They're supposed to be like purple plantain chips with this, because that's what's shown in the picture. They then replace them with like Ruffles potato chips and then they replace them with sun chips. So I'm hoping for maybe Doritos or Fritos with the chips. Let's see what we got. Oh, okay. It's the, it's the, uh, it's the yellow plantain chips. They're all right. Honestly, I kind of wish they kept the sun chips because those tasted better than... Oh, okay. They're actually a lot better than they used to be. And they're warm. And I got like a hefty portion instead of like a couple like they used to give out. Well, my Ronto wrap is uh, looking extra creamy right now. They put a lot of sauce on it. Now, last time we were here, it was like so greasy and it was just like dripping. So, you know, at Sonic, they do like flip it upside down and show you a blizzard. Let's see if I, let's do a drip test. Okay, it's not dripping, which I like. There we go. Oh, the Ronto wrap is back, baby. Ronto 10 out of 10. Mmm, that sausage. That's probably the best Ronto wrap I've had in probably years, five or six months. It's sad that it took this long for the quality to come back, and I'm nervous for when it slips again, right? I'm happy to see the current state of Galaxy's Edge right now, but I'm scared to see what happens six months down the road, right? Let's keep exploring. Now, so far, I haven't seen a single Star Wars character. I feel like they only have one Star Wars character at a time. What is this? They have a, a line just for the Legacy Sabers? So going into Doc Onders, as you know, we've shown you guys they've been out of the lightsabers since they have them back now, there's a line. There's a line to get in. This is not very themed very well. It just says, Legacy Lightsabers, return here for virtual wait list. Scan here, it's just on a printed piece of paper for you to then put in your phone number and then get a return time for a lightsaber. See what we're working with in here. Now they have a lot of the figure sets for the, like the Star Wars chest. Now if you're still worried about getting your Vader castle, they have a plenty of them. When it comes to the holocrons, they only have the Jedi one. So this is where all the Sith ones should be. So if you're wanting a Sith one, you're gonna have to go to eBay for them. But they've just filled the whole Sith area with the Jedi one. They have like the Yoda costume. I don't remember this. It's a Jedi figure. I feel like that's new. Yoda's little satchel. Right, here's a little shot of how Doc Anders looks right now. The sad thing is, Doc is down. I guess he must be out uh, doing some trading. Getting some more uh, lightsabers back. Now they have like the Jedi journals and the Jedi patches. And even if you need a Jedi communicator and to breathe underwater, they have one of those. You don't have to wait in a virtual line to go in. That's only if you're waiting for lightsabers. So I was just able to walk in. Okay, so finally they have lightsabers back and not just a couple of them. They have 12 lightsabers back. So I took a little picture. The line was too long. I wasn't gonna wait like 20, 30 minutes to go look at them. So it looks like we got Kylo, we got Luke's, we got classic Darth Maul, Ahsoka Tano's, Rey's, 
Rebels, Return of the Jedi, Luke, and then Leia. If you're looking for those lightsabers, they have them in stock. As you know, there was a point in time where they had zero lightsabers, so I'm glad to see they have 12 back in stock at Doc Gondor's. It is sad, though, that Doc is not in there. It's my favorite animatronic here at Disney, and uh, he was uh, he had his curtain call. So let's go see how the entrance with Star Cruiser shuttle is going to drop the guests. So this is where they're going to enter in to Batu. They're going to get uh, dropped off back there and walk down a hallway and then exit here. Don't know if they're going to build a wall or not, but the shrubbery is not a good look. So there'll be a cast member kind of checking people in and out. Coming from the Star Cruiser, so there's a little entrance over there. Now it looks like they've uh, created a full-on shining like maze hedge maze here. Uh, looks like somebody just bought the milk to take a picture with and just left it there. Uh, they have the stormtroopers out right now. So let's talk about the Star Cruiser and kind of the promotion material, the images that have been released. Uh, we're going to go to uh, Office Kevin right now. Oh, hey, Kevin, man. You're looking great. You're looking really young right there. You are looking a little older. Okay, just, just get on with it. Let's talk about Walt Disney World Star Wars Hotel. There's a lot to talk about. I've kind of been holding out my reservations to this moment. Let's start all the way back at the beginning. Disney announced they were building Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. They made all these grand promises about what was going to be in the land, how interactive it was going to be, there was going to be aliens walking around, that it was going to be so immersive. That stuff didn't happen. Massive budget cuts, rides were cut. Galaxy's Edge is still incredible, it just was not what Disney promised us. So then they were like, guys, we got a Star Wars hotel coming. And Everything that we promised you that was gonna happen for Galaxy's Edge with the immersion, with the aliens, with like living out your Star Wars fantasy, it's now gonna be in this hotel. So then we fast forward to the pricing, right? It's an average around $2,000 a person for a two night stay which is a lot. Let's say I wanted to go to the Galactic Star Cruiser, right? If you just wanna go as one person, you still have to pay $4,000. It's only when you have multiple people that it drops down in price. So if I wanted to go stay by myself for two days and live out my Star Wars fantasy, it would be $4,000. Now, I would say one of the most frustrating things is, right, this Star Wars experience is put behind such a luxury, high-end paywall that most average people like me will never be able to afford that. That's the price of like a used car. It's sad because I. I wish those experiences were actually in the land like they promised, then they're not. You're having to pay for it. I hope the experience is worth it for the people who are shelling out that much money. I just want them to add more stuff to Galaxy's Edge. I just feel like they're taking more away than they're putting back into the parks right now. But I think the more we've all learned the past several years is Disney doesn't want like the middle class. They don't want them visiting the parks. They want the higher end, you know, one percenters visiting and vacationing at Disney with like the big buku bucks because that's the business they just want more money right so it becomes this divide with things costing this much there's like people like average people like me right who like to go to disney and then you got like the big fish now the big fish living golden oaks club 33 if you think there's only a couple of them <laughs> No, 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 there are so many big fish at Disney. So I know a lot of people are getting upset and angry at the Star Cruiser because, you know, personally they can't afford it. But there's a lot of people who can afford it. And the grand scheme of costs at Disney, okay. Art of animation, art of animation, a glorified motel, six hundred dollars a night the cost of visiting disney is just going up and up and up it still costs a lot but for people with that type of money they don't worry about that there's a hundred rooms in the galactic star cruiser that's a lot of big fish they're gonna need to shell out so that's what i'm kind of worried about i know these first couple of months is gonna be packed and busy and then after that are they gonna run out of like big fish who are gonna be paying that type of money for the star cruiser and now pretty much up until this week all that disney showed us was just that concept art the actual stuff looks Kind of different than the concept art. Um, let's first go back with the commercial that Disney posted. Now Disney posted this, there was such negative feedback that they automatically took it down. Which honestly, that just <laughs> shined a light on it. Like, oh, everybody look at this. Uh, yeah, I don't think that commercial was done very well. So then we cut to when you booked the Star Cruiser, you were sent this kind of like pre-video. Hello there, and greetings from Chandler Star Line. Yeah, that didn't look too good either. It looked like some Xenon Disney Channel original. The girl is legit using an iPhone with the cocktail in the cozy sublight lounge. Your vacation is what you make it aboard this legendary Star Cruiser. It just looked very low quality and not that luxury experience. So then we cut to this week and then we kind of see what the Star Cruiser is looking like. So when you like are being transported up in the pod and the concept art, there are these big screens and everything. We actually got was these very small screens 
looking up. I don't know if Disney wants to be talking about this, but from what I heard for the Galactic Star Cruiser is there was just massive, massive budget cuts. It was going well up until when, you know, 2020 happened and everything shut down and then the budget got slashed drastically. And there was so much miscommunication going on within Imagineering. They were using like cheaper materials than what they were originally gonna be using. And then there were like full walls, right? That had like detail and like Star Wars-ness all over it. And they just became blank walls. And when I heard about that, kind of got a little worried. The cabins look extremely small and there were leaked images of the rooms and that toilet situation looks very bad. For, you know, if I'm paying $4,000 to go by myself, that's the toilet that I'm getting. And there was kind of some leaked footage of what a dining room experience looked like. And then just kind of like an empty room. The lights are kind of cool. It doesn't look as like grand or fascinating, I think, as we all thought. We're gonna have to wait till Friday for the embargoes to end so the press can release all their footage and images. That's gonna be interesting. I've done two openings for Disney every single time. Everything isn't there. Sometimes it takes three months. Sometimes it even took a year for certain show elements and certain things to be added. I hope everything is there for the press preview, but I'm nervous because when it comes to certain press, right, they're, they're getting a free stay. Sometimes a lot of people on the media team, they can only say positive things. You know, that's why I will literally never be on the Disney media team because you know how honestly I speak about certain situations within the company. So I'm kind of nervous for those first initial reviews because I don't trust too many of them, right? So then there'll be like the first couple weeks and everything will be great. And then after that, months and months later, that's when like everything kind of settles down. As we've seen how Disney kind of takes care of their parks, not very well. So I'm kind of nervous for the longevity of the Galactic Star Cruiser. I'm nervous and excited because this is something incredible. There's never been a theme park that has done something like this ever, where you have a fully immersive hotel that leads into your theme park. This could be groundbreaking if it is executed correctly. I'm just very nervous on if it was executed correctly. Let me know down in the comments your thoughts about the Star Cruiser. Are you excited? Will you be going? Do you think it's gonna flop? Do you think it's gonna be the best thing ever? It's just an interesting time to be at Disney because within Imagineering, it's, it's just a dumpster fire. It's a mess. They're all moving down here. The moving situation is going horrendously for all the Imagineers. I'm just gonna say that for right now. I'm a huge Star Wars fan, so I want this to be incredible. There's just a lot of red flags that I'm seeing right now. So, okay, it's time to go back to uh, Park Kevin. Okay, enjoy the rest of your day, buddy. Okay, so uh, yeah, what? Well, those are my thoughts. They had media previews. Luckily, my friends Peter and Kitchen from Ordinary Adventures, some of the best YouTubers on the internet, were there for Media Day. Now, their video will be dropping on Friday, so I'm gonna put a link in the description. Make sure to subscribe to them because they are honestly the only people that I trust with their review of the Star Cruiser right now. So Friday, they'll be dropping all their videos, I believe. They're the only ones I trust. I've never noticed this before. Is this like a, a milk container? Milk jugs? And the Blue Bantha milk right here? I've never I've never noticed this before in Galaxy's Edge. Now we have a sad update. Um, if you are invested into the dairy stock, your stocks are gonna drop because something's happening with the Dairy Queen. Hi right, Sam, what's the struggle you're going through right now? You can't, I drink, can't drink milk or as much milk anymore. The baby doesn't like it. Fun fact is Sam is due on May the 4th. All right, we're heading out of studios. Let's go back to the office and uh, talk about everything. Okay, so guys, we are back at home. Great improvement over the past couple updates we've seen at studios. Merchandise fully stocked. The only negative thing I can kind of say was Doc Ondar wasn't out. And I didn't experience too many characters during my time in Galaxy's Edge. The crowds are the crowds. We were expecting the slow season this time of year, I just think there's so much pent up demand from all over the world. And a lot of people canceled their vacations last year, so they're kind of doing their vacation from last year, this year. That's just why it's so busy. I don't know if it's gonna slow down. We shall see. Okay, so Friday, Star Cruiser videos will be dropping, not from me. Link in the description, Ordinary Adventures, they're gonna give you the most honest review of Star Cruiser. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. It really helps out the video. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, join the family, because I will keep you up to date on all things Star Wars and Disney and theme park. Hi right, guys, I love you all. Please stay safe, and I'll see y'all very soon. The smallest little shoes I have ever seen in my entire life.